Hey, 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 it's Thursday. Oh my goodness, how are you all doing? Thank you so much for jumping in nice and early and being nice and excited for this session. So great to see that our chat is already blowing up and we haven't even started. So thank you so much for coming in and for being here. I hope all the little ones have been put to sleep <laughs> safe and sound and we're all ready to have an amazing session. What I want to say though about today's session is that you'll find yourself getting a little bit triggered because today we're speaking about building your squad. Yesterday, we touched on the exciting conversation around skills and how you can start to position yourself to always be relevant by just focusing on three key tactics. But today, we're going to speak about the fastest possible way to build those exciting skills, but also to be positioned <laughs> also to be positioned quite well. You'll see that today's session is going to be extremely practical, so your workbook needs to be nice and close to you. But before we get into that, I do just want to say a huge welcome to today's session. Thank you so much for joining me today and being a part of this conversation. Like I mentioned yesterday as well, if you weren't a part of the session, you'll see that You'll be seeing me in a range of different ways. One of them is this way, where you just hear my voice and you wonder whether I'm here. And then I pop into your screen and I'm also here in this particular way. So do expect that I will be all over the place a little bit here and there, but it really helps you and I to stay as engaged as possible, but also to see some of the exciting support, which are my slides during our session today. Before I go on, I also do want to say that I'm not alone. You'll see in the chat, we have my amazing right-hand woman, uh, Taz, who's in the chat. And you'll see she's under the name Mum Taz, and that's, that's her. So if you have any questions about maybe conversations from yesterday, you want to send the link to register to join us to a friend, to a colleague, she's the person to help you out with that as well. So feel free to connect with her. She's in the chat and is a huge part of our conversation. So let's get right into it. Let's not waste any time because I think, you know, there's so much to do today. So I really want you to get the most out of today's session. So I'd like you to go into the chat. And today we're having the conversation about you and your squad. But this is where I'd like it to start. I want you to imagine that in 10 years time, someone is calling you onto a stage, maybe you're about to address people, or maybe they're introducing you to a group in a mastermind, or maybe just in a meeting. I'd like you to put into the comment section the title that they use to introduce you. So for example, with myself, when individuals introduce me, they'll go Zanel Njapa, transitions facilitator, author, and speaker, or those types of things, or award-winning speaker, or maybe they might say um, organizational uh, change specialist, or whatever it is. I'd like you to go into the chat, and you might find yourself getting a little bit, mm, I don't know if I want to say it, but go into the chat and put your title in there. So if someone wants to introduce the version of you that you are becoming, especially in your career, how would they introduce you? How do you see yourself being introduced? What's your title that you are growing into? And don't be shy with this one. Really tap into that beautiful vision that you have for yourself and, and let it shine and speak up for it and, and almost own it. I think that that's going to be the big challenge today is how do you step into that vision and not be shy about it? So yesterday we mentioned which stage we were in our careers as we transition. Today, I'd like you to start to own that vision and bring it to life. One of the conversations we had yesterday as you put those in the chat is a conversation with a dear friend of mine, but also a client of mine as well that I've worked with by the name of Gutlem Tembu. And Gutlem revealed to us yesterday how he used to be a construction, um, almost supervisor or contractor. And he moved from being just that to now actually just outsourcing. So now he has that business, but he's also a business um, consultant. He's a speaker. He's a coach. And he's done this exciting thing of merging different parts of the things he loves to create a career. And the reason why I thought it was so important to share Gutle's story yesterday is because it shows us that a career is not a job. It's not a job. A career is different ways that you show up in the world, different ways that you make an impact based on what you love. 
So today we're going to really look at not just your squad, but in the back of your mind, I also want you to have the idea of what it is that you want your career to look like, which is why the question that I've just asked you is so important. What is that title? Are you maybe, for example, Mbali Makoba, the philanthropist, philanthropist and businesswoman or philanthropist and business speaker, business strategist and entrepreneur? What is that title? Don't be shy. I don't see any coming through in the chat yet. I don't know if you're, <laughs> we're still brainstorming on them. But if you are, feel free to just put it in your workbook as well. Or put it in the chat because, and you'll see a little bit later on when we chat about some interesting research, when you and I can openly claim the things we want for ourselves, then they've actually got a higher chance of holding us accountable. And today's conversation around the squad is how do we hold you accountable? I've had too many people come to these conversations and get excited afterwards and send me messages on Instagram and emails. But then afterwards, two months down the line, three months down the line, there is little to no progress. So today, I want you to put your hand on your heart and make a promise to yourself that you are going to be accountable to you. Even if you feel like this is a space that you can be accountable to all of the other people that are in the room right now, maybe th th that can be it then. Maybe this community is the community for you. But I want you to make a promise to yourself that you are going to be accountable to that beautiful vision that you have. Okay, let's see what we've got coming through. Transformational coach, speaker, and author of Hashtag Morning Thoughts. Oh, I love that. That was a shameless plug and I love it. <laughs> He's inspired many people to transform their lives and reach levels of greatness. That is inspiring. That is absolutely inspiring. Let's see some more of those coming through. Don't be shy. Really start to own and to proclaim exactly what that is. Because the power of the brain is in the specificity that you give. So the more specific you can be about your goals, about your vision for your career, the more your brain can find different ways to support you, but also activate a part of your brain that's called the reticular activating system, which means that you're able to zoom in into certain actions and cross out actions that don't get you closer to that goal. It's really powerful stuff. But most of us are just like, oh, I just want to be successful. Oh, I just want to have a business. Oh, I just want this. Oh, I just want to be a coach. But there's no specificity. So that's, I think, a really, really great thought to open up with today. And as you bring your workbook a little bit closer to yourself, maybe start to ask yourself, where is that going to come from? How can I be just a little bit more specific about what it is exactly that I want? But also, and I love Zibuse that you touched on this a little bit, how can we make it relate to the things we enjoy and where we want to be as well? That bigger vision. Okay, cool. So let's get started. Yesterday, one of the last slides we looked at is that the easiest way and the fastest way to grow the skills we spoke about yesterday, whether those skills were maybe you looked at how you want to build the skill of coding, maybe you looked at presentation skills, maybe you looked at communication skills as a key skill, maybe you looked at a range of different skills around how those skills are going to position you for the future of your industry. Whatever those skills are, the conversation we're going to have today is going to help you to get there faster and in the easiest possible way because it's a conversation about your squad. One of the other things we spoke about yesterday, just as a quick recap for us, is that we spoke about how one of the things that actually hold us back and make us feel quite discouraged about our careers is this idea that we're just not sure where everything is going. But today's conversation is all about how the people we have around us are a very big part of that. And yes, it sounds really cheesy most of the time because we're told, oh, the top five people, you're the average of the top five people who spend their time around you. But actually, you'll see today that it's a lot more serious than you think. And then to wrap up the conversation we had yesterday, in case you were not with us, where were you if you were not with us yesterday? But one of the things we spoke about yesterday was reskilling, upskilling and future skilling and one particular skill in each that we would like to start to look at. And then out of those, I encourage that you just choose one that you will start from today. Maybe book yourself into a course, look into taking a consistent commitment to watching videos in that space. Maybe just connect yourself with someone who is in that space who can support you, depending on what that skill is that you want to build at the moment. Now, I'm gonna take a sip of water. 
let's get into today's conversation. Today's conversation is all about having a squad, but more than having the squad, how do you be, how do you become strategic about the squad that you have? That's a conversation we're going to have today, and it's going to be a conversation that might get you into a little bit of trouble with certain individuals who you already hang out with, but I promise you it makes one of the biggest differences to whether or not you build a career that just gets you so excited consistently. One thing I didn't mention earlier on when we started is if you're having any troubles with the network or hearing me, please do refresh your page by going right to the top and pressing on that little circle arrow thing clicking on that little refresh button and it'll hopefully refresh your page you'll come back and be um, present with all of us but if you are having a lot of trouble with your connection don't worry too much this session is being recorded so you'll be able to come back to it when you've got a much better connection and watch the entire session back once again so don't worry too much if you're having trouble just bumble along if you can or if not then watch the replay of this squad of this session. Now let's get into it. I'd like you to bring your workbook a little bit closer. And the other thing, I'd like you to grab a pen or pencil. I'm a big pencil person. I prefer a pencil to a pen I find. I think because I, I, I make a lot of mistakes, but <laughs> that's just my thing. So please grab either a pencil or a pen, whichever it is you are most comfortable using along with your workbook. We are going to use the note section of your workbook, or you can use the section that is titled, you'll see next to the second triangle, which is today's conversation, titled having a squad. You choose which section you use. You might need a little bit more space. And here's why I say that, because this is what I'd like you to do for me. So I'm going to remove myself a little bit off the screen here so you can see this. I would like you just using your pencil. Don't worry about how straight the lines are. If you're a Virgo like me and you're obsessed with perfection and getting things right and neatness, don't worry too much. Don't um, stress yourself out too much about that. But I'd just like you to create what you see on your screen at the moment. So we've got here one, two, three, four columns, and then you're going to create one, two, three, four, five, six rows. So five columns and six rows. And like I mentioned a little bit earlier on, what you can do is you can use the note section of your, yes, I am a Virgo. <laughs> I'm a Virgo slash Leo, actually. A little bit more Virgo than Leo, but I've definitely got traits of both. Um, so you're going to create this. You can use the note section of your workbook, or you can use the section that says having a squad. You, you choose depending on how much space you want to have, but you're going to create just this little table with four columns and six rows. Let me put that in the chat, four columns and six rows. Like I said earlier, don't worry about whether they're straight or not, whether you have enough space or not, just play it by ear. And if you find that you run out of space, you can always extend it, which is why I suggested you use the last section of your workbook, which is titled Notes. Uh, Taz, can you please share the link to the registration page or the sign up page? Those of us who don't have our workbooks, please go on to that link and quickly download your workbook on there. So you'll get access to your workbook and you can work along with us. You'll see today, right out the gate, we're already getting work done. I think today you're going to find to be really, really exciting. So once you put that together, give me a thumbs up or an emoji in the chat, just so I know where we all are and that we've all gotten that done. So four columns and six rows. Don't worry about the titles of the rows, I mean the columns as yet. I will give you the titles as we go on, as we continue with our conversation. But for now, I just want you to create this so long. Four columns and six rows. Yay, okay, I see two of us are done. Nice. All right. Okay, so just four columns and six rows. I'll give you one more minute and then just give yourself what you think will be enough space, but don't worry too much. We're not going to write paragraphs in each of these spaces, just a little. All 
Okay, 30 seconds. All right, time's up. And don't worry if you haven't had enough time to do this. We will keep coming back to it. So you'll have an opportunity to, to look from it and then come back and, and, and complete what you haven't before we start filling it out. So don't worry too much about that. All right, let's get the con this conversation out of the way. If you were not here with me yesterday, I do want to just say hi to you. If you're meeting me for the very first time because someone introduced you to myself or to my work, it's lovely to meet you. And I hope this is not the last time that we see each other. But just by matter of introduction, this is me. I've got someone learning to do. Hi there, I'm Zane Lenjaka, known to my clients as the Unlearning Lady, past primary school teacher, and now the world's leading voice on using key unlearning principles to self-disrupt, get unstuck, and transition successfully. Got someone learning to... Nope, we're not playing that again. <laughs> Once is enough. Okay, now let's move right along. Here's that list coming back. Now, what you'll notice we'll be doing as we go on with the rest of our sessions is that I'll keep asking you to do certain things as we start to fill out the various columns. So I, I see a few of us haven't put our emojis. Fingers that you've at least gotten to the end. Here's where we're going to start. I'd like you to ask yourself, who are five people that I spend most of my time with or five? And here's the interesting part. I want you to really come closer to me for this one. Either five people that you spend most of your time with or five people that you hear from the most. So for example, most of us will consume content on social media from certain influencers or certain people. Most of us will hear from certain people consistently, maybe because we're listening to the radio or we're watching a lot of maybe YouTube content on these people. So five people that by the time you go to sleep, almost on a consistent basis, they are five people who you hear from the most or who influence you the most. Take a few seconds to ask yourself, who are those people? Don't worry, this is not a test, so you don't have to get anything completely right. Just backtrack, maybe even think about today. Who are five people during today's day that have had the most influence on you? Whether it's because these are the people whose content you consume the most, maybe you hear from these people the most, or maybe these individuals are people whose content you look at the most on social media, or they're just around you so much that they've become really, really influential. And by influential, we mean that they influence what you do, what you say, how you say it, and how you do it as well, and even how you think. So make a list of five individuals. So you see that the space that we've left here so the first thing you're going to do is you're actually going to put this title up here, right in the corner, and then you're going to put your five people going down here. Let me see if I can change the color of my, yes. Let's make it purple because, because we can. So you'll put that title in there and then list those five people going down. Who are those beautiful humans? Don't worry about judging their influence on you or who they are, where they're based, whether you like them or not. Just put their names down. Who are the five people who are influencing you the most on a day to day? And as we go on with our conversation, you'll see how this is starting to take shape. And I think by the end of this, you'll know exactly what to do. <laughs> I mean, some of you might already be going, I know what I need to do. Okay, fabulous. So while you do that, I just want to continue with the conversation of why this is important. Because you might be asking yourself why this is important. Why does this matter? Hi there, Wendy. Why this matters? Why is this important? And why is this something to focus on rather than neglect? Because we've all, we've all heard this phrase. Well, not all of us. That's a huge assumption. But so much have heard, so much of us have heard these phrases around, oh, you're the average of the five people you spend most of your time with. And it sounds so cheesy. But also the other thing you'll discover is that it's actually misleading. 
because there is an aspect of falseness to it, not necessarily falseness, but it's about how you interpret it that really makes the big difference. So yes, you're not necessarily the average of those people. You are you, your unique, wonderful self, but there is some truth to this particular phrase. And so let's look at what it's actually about. What is it actually about? It's about three things in my opinion. It's about what those people say around you and to you and even about you. And then secondly, it's about what those people do to you, with you, and around you. And then lastly, it's about what those people believe. And this is the one that we often mistaken for its influence, or we often make the mistake of not taking taking seriously the influence that it has, because what individuals that you are around the most or influence you the most believe actually has a much bigger influence on you and your career than you think. So that's really three reasons in my perception why it matters. And here's another really interesting reason around why this matters so much. Because when those individuals are perhaps maybe involved in your life or these individuals are influencing you, it means that on a consistent basis, how your brain grows both structurally and functionally and even on a chemical level is influenced by the input that those humans have. So much so that your brains almost start to look alike or they influence how the neural pathways in your brain form. It's a lot more serious than we think. Let me show you exactly what I mean. Let's talk about this interesting phenomenon. Let me know in the chat. Have you come across a desire path before? This is called a desire path. Let me move my cute face out of the way. This is called a desire path. This path you see over here. I was, I was actually so impressed to see that there was a name for it. But a desire path is the name for a path that people have started to build because it's easier and because it's a lot more functional for them. Most of us will see the path that's been put aside for us, which is here, but we will choose to create a brand new path. Let me know if you've seen a desire path before and if you use desire paths <laughs> if you're a big desire path person, I know I am. I'm just going to be really honest because desire paths really show fault in design sometime because they show us just what's more practical than what we think is actually practical. So let me know, are you a desire path person? Do you enjoy taking the desire path rather than they're really, really popular? Pretty much everywhere. I see them a lot in parks, especially. But the point is, is this, especially as it comes to our brains and what neuroplasticity is now showing you and I about how we unlearn and relearn. It's this idea that when you and I can form a new path and consistently walk that path more times, it starts to become hardwired. So this path was not always like this. Desire paths don't start off like this. They start off with a full patch of grass, like you see over here, a full patch of grass. But the more consistently you fire, to speak in neuroscience terms, the more consistently you fire that neural pathway, the more it becomes consistent, the more it becomes what I call a default for you. And so we can't expect ourselves to have people who are consistently saying the same things to us over and over and over and over and over, <laughs> you get it, over and over again, and expect ourselves to take a path that isn't well formed or is still, um, is still necessarily filled with grass. Because the way that the brain works is if you don't use it, you lose it. And the path that is most used becomes the default. So let's say, for example, you have always opened your can of beans <laughs> in the exact same way. One day you decide, hmm, let's see if I can try to do it differently. And you try it. But then the next day, instinctively, you will pick up that can of beans and your brain will go to the most well-formed path of how to perform that action. Similarly, with the people we spend our time with, the more those people say and do and believe things, it influences how we then act, speak and believe over time. 
it's so simple. And so many of us can look very, very closely into our past or into our lives. And we see just how much we are really just mirroring the people around us, but also how we've created this constant loop of being like the people we are with. And that's why I always say that, unfortunately, spending time with the girls and spending time with the boys is really great. But here's what it does to you and I. It creates echo chambers. Echo chambers are places where you speak something and it comes back to you exactly as you spoke it. There is very little learning that happens in that environment because what's actually happening is that the beliefs you already hold are not challenged, but they're reinforced. So almost imagine that that desire path being walked over and over and over again. So when someone comes into your life and says, one deal, do you see yourself as someone who owns a business that gives you passive income where you can spend the entire month of September at the beach? You go, no, because the desire part that's been formed in your mind consistently is the idea that a job needs you to work from nine to five every single day of the week and you can only earn a certain amount and vacation only comes in December or whatever it is. And so I really love spending time with the girls and spending time with the boys. It's really great because it does serve an amazing purpose for us. But the point that I'm trying to make is that the best learning happens when we surround ourselves with individuals who challenge what we believe about ourselves, about our careers, about work, and about the future. And here's the thing I want you to understand, and we'll get into this, is I'm not saying <laughs> completely ditch who you're hanging out with or disown your family, but I'm speaking about diversifying your squad. And I'll tell you exactly how to do that and who the three key people you need to have from the moment you jump off this call, three people you need to adopt into your squad from today. Now, let's get a little bit deeper into some of the, the exciting research around this. Before, I used to think that it was just the people who you spoke to, just the people who influenced you the closest, probably most of the people you have on your list at the moment. But funny enough, research actually shows that it's more than that. You probably heard of the idea of six degrees of separation and a few other ideas around that that show just how much closer we are to other people than we think. So research is showing something very similar around the idea that even with things like obesity and similarly with smoking, it's not about who's around you, but sometimes it's about who's around the person who's around the person who's around the person who's around you that is influencing what you do, how you act, what you think about on a consistent basis. When I saw this, my mind was absolutely blown, but it makes sense. And so here's the big question. Who's influencing the person who's influencing you? What is influencing the person who is influencing you? How do those people think? What do they think about? Who do they hang out with? Because the truth is you and I cannot divorce ourselves from the bigger wiring and complexity of our societies. And so we really need to be careful because even at the level of extended relationships, we are being influenced, whether we know it or not. And sometimes that could be the difference between having a career that you're really excited about and finding yourself going in circles and not knowing where you're missing the point. But chances are this is probably where it's happening. This is really the golden ticket a lot of the time. And I don't want to say this too loud, but if you decided that you didn't want to show up tomorrow, it would be okay because today's conversation is such a game changer that you could just up-level your squad and make waves by the time 2022 is done. So please do come back tomorrow. <laughs> I do want to have you here. <laughs> I'm going to miss you if you're not here. But I think that I can't not mention just how important this is. Now, to close off this exciting conversation, I want to ask you this. Do you want a 65 or 95% chance of success? This is with regards to your career goals. Do you want to bump your chances of succeeding up to tonight's session is getting me thinking, that's good, that's really good. That's, that's the point. 
do you want a, a 65 or 95 percent um, a chance of success? And most of us will go, yes, 95, please. But yes, we absolutely want both. 65 percent is a good, good chance. Do you know that more than 50 percent of people who set New Year's resolutions, especially regarding their goals and their careers, struggle to keep those up past February or even past March? Because for so many of us, we will eagerly set a New Year's resolution right at the beginning of the year. And then around February, we're going, you know what? Actually, <laughs> I don't really need to do this because. But what's happening is that the brain is saying to you, do you remember the last time you didn't succeed with this? And not because your brain hates you, but because your brain is actually protecting you from being disappointed by yourself again. It's amazing what the brain does. And that's why I love the phrase, the change is hard in the beginning. It's messy in the middle because you're still trying to go, which version of myself am I? Am I the new version? Am I the old version? But then that phrase ends off with saying, it's beautiful in the end. If you've ever tried to build a new habit or unlearn anything, you will know just how hard it is. I'm actually reading, where's the book? It's somewhere here. I'm actually reading the book, The Power of Habits. If, if you like reading on, on that stuff, I strongly recommend that book. And one of the things that's, that it speaks about is the idea that a rocket uses a lot more fuel. It uses more fuel in the takeoff stage than it does in the orbit around the Earth, which I think is absolutely amazing. And it shows just how much momentum you and I need right at the beginning, because that's the part that counts. And today's conversation is going to be about how do you build that momentum that jolts you right out of where you used to be and into where you need to be. So where does this idea of 65 and 95% chances of success come from? And here's where it come from, comes from. Data shows that when you and I have an accountability structure of some sort, so someone to account to, for example, if I choose to say, Bali, I saw you in today's call, I've never met you, but I saw just how engaged and interactive you were. Can you and I connect maybe every month to sit down with our goals and go, how's it going? How can I help you? How can I support you? What do you need? And keep each other accountable. Your chances of success go right up to 65%. But here's the exciting part. They go up to 95, 95%, guys. Those are some amazing odds. Yes, please. <laughs> I'm trying to work on a book at the moment. And your the strategy is helping me so much because I can procrastinate like nobody's business. So this idea of 95% comes from when you are able to set a specific date with your accountability buddy of when you will meet, but also where you will meet, your chances of success fly all the way up to 95%. So that means you've only got a 5% failure chance, chance of failing at those goals. I think that's amazing. Or maybe just backtracking on those goals because the word failure can trigger a lot of us in a range of different ways. So those are some amazing, amazing odds. And so as you build your squad, this is something to think about. Let's hear some of your thoughts. I mean, we've covered so much already in today's conversation, but I want to hear what some of you are thinking. What is what are What are some of the things that these conversations are making you think about what actions so far, and we haven't even gotten to the activity, to the rest of the activity quite as yet, but what are you thinking so far? What are some of the actions that are coming to mind? What are some of the things you're questioning or you're going, oh my goodness, yes, you're having a light bulb moment. Let me know what some of those are. Let's just take a second to reflect. I'm one of those people I'm going to be a little bit um, creepy. I know Mbali, you've mentioned before that you wouldn't watch a movie with me <laughs> because I'm one of these people. But I'm one of those people, let me just come on a little larger here. <laughs> I'm one of those people who, when I'm watching a movie, I think because I'm so, I'm so big on gleaning lessons from everything that happens, I'm one of those people, if we're watching a movie together, for example, and it's a really good movie, there are so many different things happening, and I notice something that I can juxtapose with a deep life lesson. I will ask us to just pause. <laughs> I'll ask us to just pause the movie and go, isn't that significant that he said that? It's such a great analogy for life. And I mean, I, I get a lot of flack for it from, from siblings and people I watch movies with. <laughs> 
So I think um, you wouldn't want to watch a movie with me, that's for sure. But I just find that I love to to reflect on on things and and just find little moments where where I humble myself to the bigger lesson about my journey, about life, and about all sorts of things. <laughs> Okay, thank you. At least there's one person who could watch a movie with me. So let's see what thoughts are coming through about this conversation so far. Zibuse, you say, I'm consistent in one thing in my life and need to learn to apply consistency in all other areas. Absolutely. And um, Zibuse, we'll speak a little bit offline because I know you've booked a call with me. But one of the ideas that I teach is the idea of a keystone habit. And a keystone habit almost acts as the mother of all habits because it teaches you how to build the discipline, but also the consistency in one area like you have and how to translate it into different areas of your life. So hopefully when you and I have our one on one soon, I think you've booked it already. I have to just double check, but hopefully we'll get a few seconds to chat about that. This is reawakening for me. That's good, Wendy. I'm glad to hear that. I love reawakenings. I think they're they're really great. For me, they're like relearnings, coming back to a new lesson about something you thought you knew or you thought you understood. There's nothing like that. We live in a consistently changing world and we're always making mistakes about what we believe and what we think is true. So, so I fast forward. So, <laughs> Bali, you're... <laughs> I would love to apply that principle. Yes, I've booked. Okay, perfect. Cool. Then I will see you then. All right, let's move right ahead then. This is getting really good. Now, I'd like you to bring your workbook a little bit closer because we're going into column number two. Now, what is column number two? Column number two is a really big one because it's how you feel. How does each of, and, and the reason why you'll see at the bottom here, I've said groups, let me just use my, my pointer here. Why I've said groups is because you might have put a particular group here. Maybe you follow a certain page on Instagram, or maybe you're a part of a mastermind or a certain club. Please feel free to put that under people as well if that club is really influential or that group is really influential in terms of what you consume on a consistent basis. So let's go on to the next one then. Number two is feel. How does it make you feel? on a consistent basis? Or how does it make you feel about your career? How does it make you feel about your future career, the one that you put in the chat, that title that you put in the chat for the rest of us? And this is a really exciting one. I want you to ask yourself when the content of that individual, or when that individual speaks to you, or when they're around you, how does it make you feel with regards to your career? Does it get you excited about where you're going? Do they make you feel despondent or do they discourage you? Do they make you feel like it's going to be really challenging to get there? Or do they make you feel nothing at all? Maybe they're not even involved in triggering a particular emotion as it relates to your career. Maybe that person just makes you feel loved, makes you feel supported, and you feel like that's really important as it, when it comes to your career. Or maybe that individual makes you feel like you're not working hard enough or you could be a better person. What are the feelings? What are the feelings there around that individual, that group, that page? Like we spoke about earlier on, if you want to use a social media page for this. I'm off track with the workbook. You got lost a bit. Oh, sorry, Mbali. I hope you, you're back with us. Like I mentioned earlier, sweetheart, if it's really, really challenging for you, this will this is being recorded. Well, it is being recorded and you'll have access to the recording. So hopefully you can come back to us. I'm so sorry about that. Oh, nothing. That can, that can really be a, a huge put off. So what do they make you feel? And if you feel comfortable enough, feel free to just put one emotion there. Just one word, maybe despondent, excited, hopeful, um, inquisitive, excited. How does that individual make you feel about the future of you? Not necessarily about today, because I think it's great for people to make us feel great about who we are, but we want to start building into our squads people that see us for who we're becoming and encourage that part of us, encourage the Zibuse who is someone who's a transformational individual. Let's go back to that. Yes, a transformational coach, a speaker, an author. You want people who see that version of you. 
So take a few more, well, I'll give you one more minute. to put down those feelings. How does this particular individual make you feel about your career, about your future career? For anyone who's joining us now, maybe you weren't with us right in the beginning, please make sure you download your workbook. Um, let me actually just put, oh, shame Tess, <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Maybe let me know, it might just be me. I think it's possible that it's just me, Tez. Um Please just let me know if you're able to see Taz's comments with the link to the workbook or the link to the sign up page. It might just be me. One, two. So take a final minute. If it's not there, I'll just I'll just share it on my side. <laughs> I think we're all having all of these gremlins on YouTube today. It's it's crazy. Let me see if I can find that link, Taz. So for anyone who doesn't have their workbook quite as yet, this link will get you onto the sign-up page. I'll just put it in there. We'll get you onto the sign-up page. Thanks, Zibuse. I think um, you're so on the ball with a lot of this stuff. <laughs> so I've put that link there. Download your workbook, and then that will give you an opportunity to have somewhere to jot down your notes and thoughts. So this is the activity we're working on. If you've just joined us, we're listing the five people that we are, that influence us the most. These can be groups we're a part of. These can be people whose content we consume on social media, people in our lives, friends, colleagues, family members that really speak the most into us or influence us the most, like I mentioned. And now we're working on the feel column, just one word, to describe how each of these individuals, groups, make you feel about your future career. Maybe you see yourself growing into a transformational speaker. So I'm going to use your title there. I'm speaking it into life. <laughs> or maybe you see yourself as a transformational speaker. Maybe you see yourself as a well-accomplished or best-selling author as a part of your career. How do those people make you feel about that version of yourself? And I did reflect earlier on, if you weren't here yesterday for our session, on the journey of Gulthem, who started off as just an individual with one source of income, one job, and now has gotten into a really great place where he, he has diversified his career. He's, he's a coach, he's a speaker, he's a, a consultant, and he's doing so many of these exciting things that he's always wanted to do. And every time he speaks about his, his own clients, I just get so excited because I go, oh my goodness. Just it's so exciting to know that he's gotten that far. Okay, so we're going to move right along. Feel free to come back to this if you feel you need just a little bit more time to dig into those feelings. You'll have an opportunity to come back to this, especially when we have today's um, shot of motivation. Similar to Gushle's story that we had yesterday, we'll have another shot of motivation today coming from an amazing, amazing young lady. So during that time, feel free to use that time to fill out the rest. So okay, this is so the shot of motivation we're going to have. So like I mentioned earlier on, we'll come back to that. Don't worry too much if you don't have it. I have something for you. So I want you to stay up until the end. And, and yesterday we had a very, I mean, I feel like everyone was, yes, coming in and out, but we had so many individuals that stayed on till the end. We gave away three um, discovery calls to, to flesh out exactly what some of the gaps are in skills that you have. So those are some exciting things that happened yesterday. And I'd like you to stay online today because today is day two. And if you join for all three days, I did mention this a little bit today. I mean, yesterday, today, I didn't want to say it too much, uh, but I, I am going to say it, is that I'm actually giving away three scholarships for my upcoming exciting brand new course. So if you join for all three days, you instantly go into a draw and Taz and I will track who you are. You let us know tomorrow when you jump in, I've been here all three days and, and you'll be a part of that exciting draw to win a scholarship to, to that brand new program that I'm excited to launch. Don't worry about it today. I'll tell you about it tomorrow. For today, let's focus. Now, I mentioned earlier on that there are three individuals you want to bring into your squad. Don't worry too much about moving people out, but maybe let's focus on moving people in. Yes, you might discover that you want to start moving people out depending on how they make you feel based on what they do and what they say and believe. 
But let's focus a little bit for a few seconds on three individuals you must have in your squad. If you don't have these individuals as part of your squad so far, I don't know, you know, I don't know. <laughs> it's time to put in a bit of work to get these individuals in. And you'll see it's a lot easier than you think. Now, are you ready to hear who these people are? And I'm not speaking about, like I said earlier on, I'm not speaking about people that you necessarily need to hire, people you need to pay for, people you need to hunt down. I'm speaking about people that you may not even have to pay any money to work with. Yes, these three individuals. <laughs> oh, Zuba says, stop that. Okay, let's get into it. The very first one, and what you'll see I've done here is I have almost, let me just come back a little bit. What you'll see I've done is I've used animals to represent these individuals. Not because I feel like they're necessarily animals, because they're not, they're humans, but because the animals that I relate them to help us to remember those individuals, but also to relate them to something. You'll see exactly what I mean. Let's get into the first one. The first person you want to have in your squad is your lion or your lioness, depending on, on where you are. Um, obviously, opening up to non-binary doesn't necessarily have to be associated with gender or sex. This can just be the lion, the lioness in your squad. Or you can actually have more than one of these, and you'll notice as we go on. And the lioness is the person in your squad who is already where you want to be. So this is someone who is already a transformational speaker, is already in the position of CEO at their organization, is already a coach, is already someone who has opened a school in a rural village somewhere in South Africa, already has a philanthropic practice, already has their own brand of clothing that they've launched. Do you understand what I mean? This is a person who already is there. These people already have accomplished what you want to accomplish, already have built a career that is diverse in the way that you want to build it. So think about where your lions are. Do you know of any lions? Are there any in your life at the moment? Any lionesses in your life at the moment? But also, who could they be? So take a few seconds here to ask yourself, where are some of your lionesses? Who do you know, whether on social media, someone you can start to stalk or move a little bit closer to, that you believe is someone of a lioness in your field or in your chosen career. And remember, this is not a, necessarily about the career you're in now, but the career you are building, the one that you absolutely love. So who is the lioness? You can have more than one. Like I mentioned earlier on, who is this individual who's already just killing it <laughs> in the field that you want to work in? So they're almost that version of you personified. And sometimes it's people you already know. Maybe you're already on speaking terms with these individuals. But sometimes it's someone that you, you don't necessarily know quite yet. Maybe they're far removed from you. But who are they? Just Let's just start with naming them. And then we'll get to the practicalities of bringing them closer to ourselves a little bit later on. But I think it's really important we start by defining them first. Okay. We're going to move on from lioness and into the second person. The second person you want to have in your squad is your tortoise. Yes, I said it. <laughs> I'm actually, I actually have a thing with tortoises. I, I find them to be a little bit, a little bit, um, what's the word? In, 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 my, in my native language, we say it's tunzi. They have this energy about them, like they're wise and and they see things. So every time I'm around one of them, I just get a little bit creeped out. But a tortoise is our second animal or second member of your squad that you want to have. And the tortoise is so important because the tortoise is on their way to where you want to be. This is the person who is putting in consistent effort towards getting to where you are also going to. So a lot of the time, this is a friend, a colleague, someone that you know, or maybe even someone who's a part of a mastermind or the mastermind itself or the coaching group itself 
is made up of people who are tortoises. <laughs> and it's always great to hang out with a group of tortoises, not because they're slow, but because they are on their way, consistently making their way there. You want to really ramp up the amount of tortoises in your squad. So who is the tortoise in your squad at the moment? How can you add Yes, Mali. Oh, I strongly agree. Also reminds me of that uh, nursery rhyme and that story around the tortoise and the hare. Uh, I think it's called a folk tale if it's got animals in it. I might be wrong, but it reminds me of that as well. So where are the tortoises in your life? Where in your life have you put together structures or system to make sure you are always around tortoises? Are you a part of a group, perhaps? Do you maybe sit every now and again with someone? Maybe your friends are also tortoises in the sense that they are on their way and they've clearly stated, this is the thing about tortoises, you're not guessing that they're on their way there. You know they're on their way there because you can see them walking that way and they have even communicated it with you possibly. You don't question the idea that the tortoise is on their way there. And you'll see that this is the big difference between the tortoise and the very last individual in your squad or the last person you want to bring into your squad is that the purpose of the tortoise or the, the idea behind the tortoise is that they have definitely communicated with you or you can just see that the tortoise is on its way to where you are also going. So in a way, you could be a tortoise for someone else if you are actively putting in effort and intentionally working to be where you want to be or build that career. All right, so we'll come back to all of the practicalities like I mentioned earlier on, but it's really important that we start to understand what each of these three are. And then the very last one, possibly my favorite, this animal, and the reason why I've chosen this final animal is because this animal is on more lists of the laziest animals in the world almost than any other animal that I've seen. So there are these lists around who are the laziest animals in the world and, and which ones um, top the list or top 10. But this animal just kept coming up. And possibly one of my favorites is the panda. The panda is an absolute, oh, it's, a, it's really a, a heart wrencher for me, but really considered to be a very lazy animal. But what you'll discover, and when you do a little bit of looking into the panda, is that the panda is designed this way, not because it's actually a lazy animal, but because the panda is intentionally designed in its very makeup as, as an, an animal to do certain things, but also to cool down when it needs to cool down and to act in a particular way and to roll around here and bumble around there and do what it does because that's just in its nature. The reason why animal number three or individual in your squad number three is a panda is because this is the person who you don't necessarily see what they're up to. You don't think that they have the intention to be somewhere, but you can either see two things in this person. You see that they have the desire to be where you want to be, or they have the potential, and sometimes both. The panda is someone who is not necessarily making a run for, for that goal, for that career goal. They're not necessarily working on getting things done, but they have the potential or they have the intention or the desire to get there. And here's the reason why it's really important to have a panda, because now you're going, oh, so why do I want to have the panda? If the panda's lazy and they're just lazing around, not doing much, the reason why you want to have the panda is because the panda becomes the person who's watching you. When they know that you are a tortoise, then they start to watch you. And you always want to be in a position where you're encouraging other people to also start moving. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, you're doing enough for someone to start to learn from you. And guess what? Nothing motivates like having a panda watching you. If you've got beautiful children, you know this. Because the power of having pandas in your network is that pandas will watch you. And one day when that little spark inside of them to start to reimagine what their careers could be, they are going to look at you and what you're accomplishing and what you're doing and who you're becoming. And they will start to do one thing or the other. Or maybe we'll just change the way that they look at things. That's the importance of having a panda in your network. So take some time to ask yourself, who are those pandas in your network at the moment? And that's exactly what we're going to do now. So I'm just going to jump 
onto the rest of our conversation here because this is where you'll see you can now start to add the type onto the list. What is the type of each of the individuals that you put in here? Are they a lioness slash lion? Are they a tortoise? Or is that individual a panda? So you're going to add the title type to the top of the table. And then let me know, which type do you believe that individual is? Are they a lioness? Are they a tortoise? Or are they a panda? So I'll give you a few seconds to just add that. Which one do you think they are? A lioness, a tortoise, or a panda? see we have a question is it possible for them not to be in some or any of the animal types yes it is quite possible so maybe define it for yourself where you think they would fall or maybe what you think they would be or just put in there what role you think they play especially if you feel they don't fall in any of the types or they fall in more than one category feel free i i am known as the unlearning lady because i believe that sometimes boxes can be helpful for grouping, but also they can be very restrictive in how they teach us to think. There's always a way to break out of the box or the mold. So please feel free to play around with that. Thanks for the question, um, Zimbuse. Thank you, Mazet. Oh, goodness. I actually had such an interesting conversation with someone today about the name Mazet. When people call me that, it feels, it feels like a <laughs> it just feels like a, a name that is so far from me. It feels a bit like a, a granny name. Anyway, <laughs> let's move right along from that. So once you've put that type in, like I mentioned, if you feel like they don't necessarily fall into any type, define the role that you feel they play for you. Because I'm only watching because I think you're awesome. Oh, you're so sweet. Give us your name so we know who you are. Uh, thank you very much. It just means a lot to have you here. And I hope hope that there is something that you'll pick up from this conversation that you'll find really helpful. Okay. So what you've probably realized now after going into those individuals, but also how they make you feel about your career, about your growth, and the type that they fall into out of those three or outside of those three, you'll realize that the big lesson is this. The big lesson is diversity. Now, I couldn't find a picture with both, with three, and with all three of these animals, the lioness, the tortoise, and the panda, because it's virtually impossible. <laughs> uh, but I did find one with the, the two animals. Zanelli, right? That name, Mazet, there's just something about it. <laughs> Maybe there are other Zanelis out there who actually like that name. Maybe it's just you and I that get a bit triggered. <laughs> All right, so you probably know now that the point of this is diversification. And I remember listening to a conversation once where someone went, I have a particular feeling about my body image. And there was a conversation around body image and, and women. And one of the first pieces of advice that individual was given 
is look at who you're following on social media. What are you consuming? What are the images of beauty that you're seeing on a consistent basis? And when that individual was able to change what they consume, what they see every day and how they're being influenced, everything changed. So the point of this conversation, the one we're having today, the one we're having right now is diversification. Diversify the people that you hear from. Diversify the people you spend your time with. Diversify the people who are, maybe the, the books you read, the places you hang out. Whatever it is, you really want to build that, that diversity, but also that mental flexibility. I do a lot of interesting research around how the brain changes as a result of our environment. And one of the exciting things about that is when we have mental flexibility in our work, in our careers, or as we grow in our careers, we have a higher chance of being flexible, being able to look into becoming a, a different form of entrepreneur, taking on new investments, looking at our careers in new ways. And I always like to give the exciting but creepy example of how, when Einstein died. Now, when most of us think about Einstein, we're like, oh my goodness, his brain must have been so interesting. So when he did pass away, individuals did exactly that. So medical specialists actually opened up his skull and checked his brain out because they were like, what's happening in Einstein's brain that makes him so sharp, so intelligent? And they found out that Einstein's dendritic connections were so amassed and so much more complex than the average human being. Now, what does that mean in English? Basically, what that means is that Einstein had exposed himself to diverse environments. He spoke to diverse people. He did a range of different activities that all stimulated how he thought about life. And when you and I are able to diversify, even to people that challenge how we think, we've got a higher chance of surviving in a constantly changing world. Going back to yesterday's conversation about building a career that outlasts what you think is a lifespan of a career. And that's what you want. You want to stay in a place where you're relaxed about the future because the future stresses a lot of us out. But if you're exposing yourself to this beautiful diversity in input, in, in insights, then you've got a higher chance of, of staying strong through that. Okay, this is the opportunity I mentioned a little bit earlier on that if you're still working around this, you can now use because it's time for our exciting shot of motivation for today. And like I mentioned earlier on today, we've got conversation that I had with a superb individual. And one thing I want you to look out for as you listen to this particular conversation is I want you to listen out for how this individual was able to move from a place of just being in a, a junior position like she was into being in a position of leadership and how she was challenged but continued to work through that. Someone that I worked with who's absolutely amazing. And one thing she didn't mention in this video, I don't know if she's okay with me mentioning this, is just how she's diversified her income streams as well. And she started to build a career that's a lot more than just her corporate job by launching an exciting children's clothing line, which I was just like, yes, girl, that is so exciting. Because yes, your career is not just about the company you work with. It's so much more than that. And don't let it end there. So I'm going to disappear and we're going to get into today's shot of motivation. I will see you when it ends. Okay, so we're going to have a conversation with a truly amazing human. And I'm just trying to think back when we worked together. I think it might have been 2020 or 2021, but during the time when the world had a makeover, everyone was confused about everything. <laughs> so that's when I started to, I started working with the lady that is going to speak to you now that you see already on your screen by the name of Zink and Boon. And when we made our connection with each other, I realized that she actually doesn't live too far from where I'm based as well. So we started our journey together. Zinke, thank you so much for making time to speak to me. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Vanele. Um, it's good to connect again. Um, it was a great journey with you, and I see you still doing amazing things. Hey, hey. So let's start there then. Can you give us a little bit of who you are in a nutshell so people know who they are here? Okay. So I'm Zinche, originally from Durban, the south coast of Durban, I'm Zintoti, born and bred there, 
I am mom to a very, very active 22 month old. <laughs> um, she, she keeps me on my toes. Um, single mom, but yeah, I am a career woman. I have great aspirations in my career. It's been an incredible journey, um, highs and lows. Um, so I do come from an IT systems background. I am a data analyst by profession, um, but at the moment, I am currently um, a functional head, heading up a, a team of, of other analysts. So I don't, I don't do the work as much as I used to, but I do oversee and um, groom a lot, of, a lot of talent in our current organization. So yeah, that's, that's a bit about me. I'm so exciting. I remember when we, we were starting to work together, you definitely had such amazing leadership qualities and you knew that that's, that was you. You were born to lead, to, to champion, to steer conversations. So I'm so excited that you are just living that out. Tell, take me back. Maybe let's go back just a little bit. Who was Zinke before we started working together? Who was she? What was she feeling? What was she going through? Okay, so I think when we met Zanel, a lot had happened um, in my life, both in a personal capacity and in my, my professional career. Um, I just joined an organization and a few months into it, um, I realized I was pregnant. Um, then not long after that, we went into lockdown. Then not long after that, um, I went on maternity leave. Um, then uh, COVID happened, then I lost my mother to COVID. Um, and then right after that, when I got back to work, after my seven months of maternity leave, I was in a bit of a scramble, you know. I just joined this organization, I was, was trying to find my feet, and then like things changed, leadership changed. I wasn't sure about where I was going. Um, I was a new mom, a single mom trying to find that balance and I, I, I think I was really confused um, and beginning to doubt myself and, 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 and the career path I wanted to take for myself. Um, so I think when I reached out to you, I approached you in that sense, I was like, I'm confused, like, I don't know where I'm going, um, like I need help, I need direction um, and yeah, I mean, I, I used to look forward to our sessions, <laughs> I really did. Um, <laughs> I was like, you know what? When something had happened at work, people like, you know, I need to unpack this people and I need to unpack this people and And it was such an incredible journey for me. Um, you opened up my eyes to, to so many different ways of thinking um, and evaluating circumstances. So, so yeah, really, that, that's where I was at when we began our journey. And I must admit, things are a lot clearer now. Um, and I, I, I say thanks to you as well. Um, and I think I'm, I'm more deliberate about my work. And life in general, um, with my career, about my choices. Um, I think sometimes when we, we feel like we're stuck in a corner, we feel like we don't have options because you can't see them anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but really, one of the things you told me about is like, who do you want to show up as? You know? um, and, I, and I carry that with me, like, who do I want to show up as? You know? mm -hmm. I'm not a victim. Um, I have control of who I show up as. And uh, really, that's how that's how I run my life. That's how I lead my life. It's actually my motto now. That's so. <laughs> oh I've got goosebumps like the entire time <laughs> as you're talking, because of the energy. Like I'm a big energy person, and I can just feel your energy and how different it is. But how you've always had you've always had that. I think we used to be like, I used to be like, why are you even, why are we working together? Because we're fine. <laughs> because we just always um, had this thing. I think, like you said, sometimes you just need someone to just shine a light on it. And that pretty much, I think, is all I can say that I did. Because it was just always, always, always there. Tell us a little bit about where you are now, maybe just in one or two details. What's different now? in terms of maybe things around work, what are you up to that is is maybe a testament to this this version of you that's now a little bit more intentional, a lot more clear, a lot more um, intentional about what they're doing. So um, if I can just think back to one of the exercises that we did together, um, the visualization exercises, 
Um, I, I think we're going to speak about my love life. So I was very detailed and I knew exactly what I, what I wanted for myself. I um, haven't quite found the Mr. Right yet. <laughs> um, but person being is yes. Um, and then when it came to my career, because I was, I was, I was, I was, I was a bit confused at the moment, at the time, um, it was hard for me to, to even begin visualizing. But you, you encouraged me not to stop the exercise. And I did. I did. And, um, and I, I continued to think about a safe environment, um, a safe space where I had a voice, where I was heard, um, where I'd make a difference. You know, where where people would see my potential and 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 a place where I could grow. Um, and honestly, that's exactly where I'm at today. So I, I started a new job at the beginning of this year, and in January, it scared me. Uh -huh. um, it was a leadership role, a functional head. Like, oh my gosh, do you ever know what I'm doing? Who such a big portfolio? Um, but you know, like I said, I'm under such incredible leadership. You know? It makes a world of a, a difference when you're working with people who actually believe in you. Um, they they motivate you, they drive you. Start believing in yourself again, and I think really, really, that's where I'm at. So, like I said, I'm heading a team of um, analysts in, in my space. Um, some are, actually the team is relatively new, so we all sort of like trying to find our feet. Um, but it's that like, really, really incredible. Um, watching them grow and watching myself grow. It's like five months into the role, but I feel like I've been it for five years. You know, mm -hmm. um, we work long hours. Um, my days, most of my days, are very stressful. But you know, at the end of each week, it's like shit. Sure, it was worth. It. You know? And and that's that's what I love the most. Um, it's not in vain. Um, my boss will probably tell you that I moan. <laughs> <laughs> I moan a lot of like this and that. But you know, at the end of every week, I'm like, gosh, you did so much. You got so much over the line. Um, and really, it's it's a high pressure environment, um, and I, I thrive under pressure. Um, some sometimes I feel like it's too much, but yeah. when we get the job done, it's like. Wow, I, I did it. So I'm really, really in a good space. I'm happy. Um, people keep saying, oh, isn't it a glow? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be nice. Like, I, I'm, I'm so happy. I'm content. Um, like, obviously, like, life isn't perfect. Um, in certain aspects of my life could be better. Mm. But I'm, I'm overall happy. Um, and, you know, I still practice those visualization exercises. And, and uh, and they and they make me excited, excited about the future. So so really, that's that's where I'm at at the moment. Oh my! It sounds you know when people say that because I get I speak to a lot of people who even use the word hate to describe their jobs, and so when you tell them that there is a possibility for you to yes be under stress and, and work sometimes long hours and and have it be tough because life can be. But just to have that feeling that you wouldn't be doing anything else, even if even if you didn't get paid, sometimes you would just be doing it. People can't believe it. And when I see you speak about the work you're doing now, that's exactly what it is. It's that whole, you know what, yeah, it, it, it has its moments, but I wouldn't be doing anything else. Absolutely. Like I wouldn't. Um, I think my boss would say I'm lying. <laughs> um, because I bend all the time, but I think it's part of the process, you know, it's, it's, it's all part of the process. But really, there's the, the, the love and passion for what I do and the appreciation for the kind of work that I do. So, so I think it, it makes the world of a difference. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Let's speak about what made the biggest difference. If you think about your entire journey up until now, what would you say maybe is, I know you've mentioned the visualization, you've mentioned it twice now, so I guess that was a big one. Anything else that you would say was an absolute game changer in maybe making an impact? Um, definitely the visualizations um, and just being deliberate about my thoughts. You know, you, you, you teach us a lot about self-awareness and, um, and learning. You know, and in order for you to unlearn the negative beliefs that you have, you need to there needs to be a level of self awareness within you 
So um, I do a lot of reflecting. I think even before I met you, I, yeah. I was just in Panda. But now it's, it's, it's more deliberate, you know. Um, I can't remember one of the exercises that we did. Um, but you, we were talking about uh, my, my goal, you know, like where do I see myself? And then not, not only did you make me do that, I was like, okay, I look, this is a new, like normal, you know, goal plan exercise. But you went into detail and you spoke about the things that I needed to put in place to make sure that I meet my goals, you know? And um, really now I don't just set goals, like I detail action and support that I will require. I mean, I'm a single mom, mm. I'm chasing a career. What, what do I need? I need a full-time help. I need a full-time nanny. You know, like those are some of the things. Um, so, so, so really all of those tools and those techniques, they, they've helped shape me. And then I no longer feel like a victim of circumstances. Like I said, I'm very deliberate about my work. And that's like, what do you want? Okay, so what are the necessary steps that you need to take to get there? Yeah. Um, and it's, it's really, it's, it's, it's mind blowing. It seems, it seems minor, but it, it, it's such an empowering way of thinking and doing life. Mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah, that, that's where I'm at. And I just made a purchase. I'm officially a homeowner. Yay! <laughs> Yay. <laughs> oh, that's so Congrats. Thank you. I just I got a, a little place for me and baby. Also visualized it, so I must admit, so what I wanted. Um, and it's amazing. That technique, it blows me away. <laughs> <laughs> um, I walked into it and I was like, this is the place. Wow. So, uh, that's wow. Goodness. Okay, let's end off with tips, practically, because I'm sure individuals are looking at this and they're going, okay, I want to be where she is. Any key tips, even if it's just three or just one, that you you can give to individuals who are looking at you right now, listening to this conversation, they have either they are either where you were before you and I started working to the, together, and they just they just want to be where you are now. Um, I, firstly, I'd encourage you to reach out to Zanelli um, for coaching. <laughs> Her coaching sessions are incredible, worth worth every cent. Um, I, I definitely do it again. I actually want to do it again. I mean, I think I'm I'm at the next level, and I, 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 you need you need to continue and continuously improve yourself, and and have that second lane. Um, so definitely, get yourself a coach. Um, they'll teach you great techniques. Um, and then secondly, I say like. Like I've already mentioned, the visualizations tool. Um, I've always, always believed in them. Um, I've always had a vision board, which has worked really, really well for me. Um, but you know, when you imagine it in your mind, uh, it's just it's, it's something else. So definitely that. And then just surrounding yourself with individuals you can chat about. You know, your real, real issues with at, at work. Um, you know, sometimes I think you think you're the only one that's going through a certain thing um, and you begin to carry that uh, uh, and personalize that and, 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 and you, it, it becomes you. Um, reach out to other people, have a chat with them. You know, you'll find that really you're not alone and it's really not you. Um, sometimes it's just about being in the wrong environment, you know. Um, it's about finding the right environment for you where you can blossom and grow. And it's not to say that you, you're in a, a totally bad environment, but maybe it's just not the place for you. And um, I don't take any of those experiences in vain. Um, each each of my experiences in my career journey has taught me a lot about myself. Yeah. You know, we I could develop, um, when, when to speak up and when not to. You know, I think we tend we tend to, to let a lot of things slide and we don't speak up for ourselves and then we start feeling like victim and um, when it's really, really not the case. So but when you start surrounding yourself with people who think alike, um, who encourage you to be vocal, it makes a world of a difference in, in, in your path. So so really I think those are my three three tips for, for anyone who's who's feeling stuck um, and not really knowing 
how where to and feeling like they, they don't have a lot of options. You do have options, you are plenty. Um yeah, and you do have the potential to more than you tap into it. Mm. Oh wow, you are just such fire. I feel like the entire time I was speaking, I'm thinking, no, Zinta needs to look into being a coach, being an author, something. <laughs> but at least you're leading <laughs> people. So that's good. <laughs> My friends are always like, you really need to write a book. You really need to start a blog. Um, and it's definitely on one of my um, to-dos. I just need to find the time. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think I'll start a blog one day. Definitely. And I'm just so glad that you are in a position to lead other people because it means other people are rubbing shoulders with someone like you with everything you've been through and, and, and everything that you are. But I love what you said something that I thought was so powerful, watching them grow and watching you grow. So you're almost growing together. And there's nothing like a leader who's growing with you. That is so, so powerful. Thank you so much for your time. Oh, thank this is amazing. you, Amelia. And thank you for the opportunity. Um, I hope I inspire someone. Um, so yeah, thank you so, so much. You're so welcome. I don't doubt that you absolutely will. And you might even get a few individuals wanting to reach out. If they do, how can they reach you? Um, so they can email me. My email address is vnjmv at gmail.com. Or they can reach me on my Instagram, zintamuvwene. I'm also on Facebook, zintamuvwene. And they can find me on my LinkedIn profile, um, zintamuvwene. Mm -hmm. uh, I think not a very common name so it will be easy to find so. i'm sure they'll want to follow you and follow your journey see how you're doing just for inspiration <laughs> because sometimes it's, it's, it's as little as just who is on your feed every day that can mm -hmm. influence how you start thinking so i'm sure you'll get I'll, I'll be sure to share more content things <laughs> see this is how it starts <laughs> well thank you so much Vita. i appreciate you Appreciate your time, wishing you all of the best for the rest of your journey. I can't wait to watch you grow even further. Thank you so, so much, Zanella. I appreciate you. Bye. Oh, wow. Just such goosebumps watching that because this individual just brings brings our conversation today to, yeah, right? Goosies, Zolega, absolutely. Just just all of the fields, <laughs> every single one of them, because her journey has just been so magical to watch. And her and I didn't even, I think we worked together for, what was it, like eight or so months together. And during a very tough time, it was 2020 of, of all times <laughs> that we worked together, feeling so stuck and everything. But one of the things, and she mentioned so many different things here, but I think one of the purposes I want this conversation to serve in our shots of motivation that we've been having um, every day during these three days is just, just do what you can. Just do what you can because most of us are stuck in the position of just this repetitive way of thinking. And usually that's, that's where it starts. It's just understand that there's a different way. There's a different way to do what you've been doing. There's a different way to think about what you think about. And if, if that's all you do during these three days, at least I will be super happy about that because it'll mean that I've done my job. Now, let's finish off and then we'll open up for questions. The last one. So bring your workbook a little bit closer to you and let's do that final column. So the final column is going to be about you. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? So what you're going to look at, and maybe let me bring my pointer back here a little bit, what we're going to look at now is the people that we've put in, the feelings that those people give us about our future careers, the type that they fall into out of those three types or outside of those three types. And then now the question you're going to ask yourself is looking at this person, this group, how they make me feel, the type that they are, what am I going to do? And different things you might want to think about here is the action might be something like get more of this type of person into my network or maybe spend a little less time with this individual or start to speak about my actual goals tangibly with this person 
or it might be maybe start to pay for a mastermind, maybe find a way that I could get into a group coaching sessions with other tur tortoises, almost said turtles, other tortoises that are similar to myself. How can I make my squad so powerful that it gives me no choice but to become that person. Zintle spoke so beautifully and Gutle also yesterday about the power of visualizing and the power of believing. Now, when a lot of people work with me, they go, how's Anele? I thought we were going to start by talking about strategies and how I can get ahead at work. And, and I go that I could teach you all of that stuff, but you will sabotage it within a month. You will sabotage it within a month and you will find yourself back where you started. If we don't do the big work of changing what you believe, because if you still don't believe like you deserve it, you still don't believe that you can earn money in different ways, you still don't believe that you can be in a particular position at work, then you can sit in that position for a month, but you'll find a way to come out of that position because you don't believe that you deserve it and that it's for you. So this work that you're doing today and yesterday is such big work because you'll start to see the difference. And, and this is the exciting part. You start to see the difference after just these three days. And please let me know if anything changes, let me know and go, oh my goodness, Anele, I just implemented this or this just changed or this is, um, this is a big shift that happened. I can't wait to hear those. So put down those actions, take a few minutes. If you feel like you don't necessarily want to put those actions down now, give yourself maybe some time as soon as you and I jump off today in the next few minutes to put down a few actions, reflect, take some time with yourself in the silence of your own beautiful heart and just think about what are you going to do? Maybe it's as simple as unfollowing certain people on social media or maybe it's about starting to follow certain individuals, starting to connect with certain people on LinkedIn who are influential in the way that you want to be influenced. Because the point is, whatever you are consuming, hearing, seeing every single day is making more of a difference to who you become than you even realize. Because it's influencing your subconscious mind. And you want to really, really take advantage of that. I would hate for any of us to be on our deathbeds. And I always say this, it makes me sound weird. But, but it's just my biggest, my biggest fear is for us to live in a space of regret. And I don't want that for you. So whatever you need to do, get it done. Push yourself because you know you're capable of it. So let's put those actions down. What are you going to do? What's going to be different from now on? What does that person, that feeling and the type that they are teach you about what you need to do from here on out. And one thing that you may even be thinking about is how maybe you need to start to have conversations with that particular person about your dreams. Maybe that person is a panda and they don't quite believe it for themselves yet. Maybe every now and again, I used to do this exciting thing with a friend of mine. Every morning when we woke up, we would send each other inspirational quotes. And, and we used to do it a while back and, and we stopped doing, but sometimes he would have a turn and I would have a turn and we'd send each other just these motivational quotes every morning. And I could feel the difference in my energy levels when we stopped doing it. Because it would mean every single day I would start my day off checking in with a person who was a tortoise like me with something that motivates me to continue to do what I do. It would set me up in, in just the most amazing ways. And he was an entrepreneur similar to me, still is. And it was, was fantastic. It used to give me a really great jolt. So there's power in that. Um, okay, let's see. We've got some comments coming through. <laughs> Self-sabotage is one of your biggest challenges mm, for all of us. And please don't limit it to yourself. We all suffer with self-sabotage. One of my mentors says we all have our specialized brand or flavor of sabotage. We all sabotage ourselves in different ways. Sometimes when we feel like things are going too well, we will either do something that causes things to go back to the level that we're used to. I love the quote that says, we don't rise to the occasion, but we fall to the level of our highest training. So whatever you've trained yourself to accept and to be your normal, is where you'll just keep coming back to. Think about the idea of the desire path we talked about. You'll just keep coming back to the level that you think is possible for yourself and you'll never get beyond that. And in your career, you want to just always keep moving to what is possible for you because there's so much more. 
Okay, we're going to wrap up. Today has just been so exciting and I'm, I'm getting all of the feels about today's conversation. So it does mean that we, we might go over time a little bit. So let's wrap up our conversation. I want to hear what you're going to do now. What's your first step? Let me know in the chat. Let's see where you all are, where we all are with today's conversation. And let me know what's your first step. Where are you going to start? It has been intense, right? I agree. I agree. So I want you to go into a bubble bath after the session. I want you to, to treat yourself to ice cream or whatever you love, because this has been really heavy work. It's been really, really heavy work today. Managing people's expectations and biting off more than I can chew. Interesting. Moshe, is that, is that your, because I assume that's not your first step. Would you say that that's your brand of sabotage? It sounds like. Or maybe are you saying that you you want to get better or your next step is now managing other people's expectations? And let me know. And maybe that's what, what you're saying is that you, you want to bite off more than you can chew so you can challenge yourself. So let me know. What are you referring to there? We'll take one more minute. We can also use this time now as we wrap up for any questions, if you've got a question that's come up, a concern, maybe something sprang to mind and you'd like us to just take one or two seconds to talk about, oh, is that a brand of sabotage? Fabulous, thanks, Moshe. That you'd like us to just take a second to speak about, or you have a question, let's use this time to do that. Yes, it's a brand of sabotage. Yeah, it absolutely is. I think bending to other people's expectations is a very common form of sabotage for so many of us because we are we are still learning. I think as a society, a lot of us are still learning the concept of setting boundaries that protect us, but also protect other people because your boundaries don't just serve you. They also serve the other person. So, yeah, I'm with you right there, Moshe. I, that's definitely one of the things I consistently have to train myself to work on as well. Limiting the scope of what I'm doing to actually achieve a goal. Thanks, Nasipo. Great to see you in the room today. Cutting people I know don't add value or directional as I am. I am or will be. Will be hard. Yes, that's what. Sorry, sorry. I just had a weird way of reading that. Uh -huh. It is going to be very challenging. And I think that it's important here to understand that this is not about burning bridges but it's about it's about being intentional about your relationships and your squad and what you'll even find and this is the the strange part what you'll find is the more clear you become on your squad members the more the people who don't fit into where you're going or maybe don't necessarily want to support you or be a part of your journey will start to fall away because you'll almost become out of sync with them think about a person who speaks about and I know maybe, but, but, but let me use myself as an example. Being an Enneagram 3, I have a, a weird relationship with complaining. I, I almost, because I've got a strong bias to action, I'm all about getting things fixed. And sometimes even when, when things don't need to be fixed, but people need to be listened to. But I find it really hard to sit with individuals who will complain for a long period of time without being intentional about what comes next. And so I find that those individuals as I express the way I feel about that context or I feel about that particular way of doing things, they start to wean off. I've got very few people that I spend my time with who are in that particular category. So you need to, from the beginning, and I love that, Musha, you mentioned this, being clear about your expectations and where you're going so that the people who spend time with you know that Mbali is going here. This is her goal for life. This, And so that even those people start to almost become people who support you. And if they hear about someone who could be a client or could potentially open a door for you, they refer you. And you almost start to get this beautiful combination of people who are rooting for you and supporting you on your journey. But they won't do that unless they know where you want to go. And most of us, we just cruise with the people in our squad. They don't really know what we want, where we're going, what we're working for. They just know us as this really cool person who's nice and kind. <laughs> they don't really know where it is that we want to go. But if they did, I think they would support us. 
So let's close off our conversation. We've gone five or so minutes over time, but it's really been a juicy day. And I can see a few of us strongly agree with that. So yesterday we gave the opportunity to three individuals to have a one-on-one -on -one chat. And today's conversation is going to be about auditing your squad. I would like to give you 15 minutes of my time and I would be honored if you gave me 15 minutes of your time because that's your time too. Just to sit for 15 minutes to audit your squad. Individuals that you have in your life, what you're going to do. We're going to take this table and we're going to look at it in those 15 minutes and talk about your action points. So if this is something that you feel you would like to have, I would like you to put the word me in the chat. And let me actually just, okay, that's fine. We won't do it because then, okay, fabulous. I'd like you to put the word me in the chat. Sorry, I have this moment where I say things and then I'm, I'm speaking to myself and sometimes I'm speaking to you. <laughs> it's a little bit weird in my head. So let me know by saying me in the chat if this is a conversation you want. It's completely complimentary. Just a 15-minute conversation. And like yesterday, there are only three of these available. So if you've already had a conversation to speak about your skill gaps, if you feel like you would like one of these as well, um, you can also put me in the chat. And what we'll do is we'll extend the one you've already booked and just have it to include both speaking about your skills and... Okay, fabulous. So we have our three. Wonderful. Okay. Zanele Mbali. And Nosipo. Okay. So we'll only take three. Um, I see YouTube is telling me that it's recalibrating for my connection. So the first three individuals to say it, I'd like you to please email me and Taz will send you the link to book that session for yourselves. And let's have a conversation about your squad. And you can let me know that that's the focus of your conversation when you book it. Okay, guys, it's now time for us to wrap up. Thank you so, so much for spending time with me today. It's been lovely connecting with you. I did see a comment earlier on and I do want to just acknowledge it about the potential of working with me. I do want to say that that is definitely something that we can do, but I'm only going to speak about that tomorrow. So come back tomorrow if you do want to have a conversation about how you can work with me, how you and I can collaborate on your journey as you start to build and grow. Thanks, Tez. It's been lovely to have you. Thank you, Tez. Just outrightly, thank you so much for being so supportive of being a part of these sessions and for just supporting this amazing community. Thank you for spending your time with me today. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. I'll give one minute before we jump off in case there are any questions that we've missed or anything you think, or you just want to share final thoughts of how you found this session and, and how the session has served you on your journey so far. Please feel free to put that in the chat now as we start to wind down our conversation from today and say goodbye to each other after amazing time. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure. It's an absolute pleasure. You're so welcome, Zibuse. The more I can do this, the better I feel about this work. Okay, it seems you don't have any questions. Just lots and lots of love. Thank you so much for joining us today, and I hope I will see you again tomorrow. <laughs> I hope I will be seeing you again tomorrow for the very final session of... Oh, Goodness, I can't believe it. But it's our very final session tomorrow. Please do invite a friend if you know someone who would be really, really um, honored and excited about joining us as part of the conversation tomorrow. Sleep well, wherever you are in the world, or have a good day if you've just risen from your sleep. And I'll see you tomorrow, 6 p.m. South African time. Same time, same place. Bye for now. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you, Taz.